In the remote past, more than three million years ago, a tiny female lived by a lake on the edge of the lush forests of Africa. She was part ape, part human. She lived a brief life, but her story continues to unfold. By an extraordinary set of circumstances, she left tantalizing clues to her life and our origins. Who was she, and what can we discover about this earliest of our most ancient ancestors? We know she existed because we found these, her fossilized bones, in the very spot where she died all those years ago. Fossils like these are so rare that they're even harder to find than diamonds. But they're the key to understanding our origins, knowing who our ancestors were and how they lived. The human story begins in one of the most geologically fascinating places on the planet, the Great Rift Valley of Africa. It's an enormous split torn in the Earth's crust that runs from the forests of Tanzania to the deserts of Ethiopia. In some places, the rift is thousands of feet deep and exposes the last 15 million years of the Earth's history. I'm Don Johansson, and over the last 20 years, I've been leading fossil hunting expeditions in this remote part of Africa on the trail of our earliest ancestors. The journey takes me and my team right down to the floor of the Great Rift. It takes two days driving on to dusk if our vehicles don't break down. But it's only in places like this where the fossils we're looking for can be found. People often ask why we look in Africa for remains of our earliest ancestors. Well, Charles Darwin had a pretty good answer to that question over a century ago. When he observed the close similarities between humans and modern African apes, he correctly concluded that we must have shared a common ancestor. Starting with the modern human skull, we can trace our ancestry back millions of years. And as we travel back in time, our ancestors look less and less like us. They begin to resemble our closest relatives, the African apes, with their small brains. Fossil skulls like these help us unlock the mystery of our past. And it is in Africa that the earliest human fossils are found. All next week, the Earth moves. This is not a test. This is not a test. All right, All right good. Let's get the corner, Michael. Okay. Just take the corners first. That's pretty stable. Our team always camps here at a place called Hadar in Ethiopia, on the banks of the Awash River. When I first came to Hadar, I realized that this was exactly the place I was looking for. Its potential is absolutely staggering. When I began to walk these gullies and valleys, I saw tons of fossils eroding out of these ancient geological strata. There's almost no vegetation so the seasonal rains do most of the work for us, scouring the surface, uncovering buried fossils. They're bones of every imaginable creature, perfectly preserved in stone. But even here, human remains are incredibly rare. That's because the journey from a living creature to a fossilized bone only happens under the most unusual conditions. 
I can make a good guess about how our earliest ancestor might have been preserved millions of years ago. She wasn't killed by a predator, she died a natural death. Undiscovered by scavengers, her body simply sank into the soft sediments of the lake. There, lying undisturbed, her flesh slowly rotted away. Sand and gravel washed in by heavy rains gradually covered the bones. Over the millennia, hundreds of feet of sediments built up, burying the bones deeper and deeper. Minerals from the sediments gradually replaced the calcium of her bones, almost molecule by molecule, turning them to stone. Over the next few million years, she remained buried. But the movement of the Earth's crust, continuing to enlarge the Great Rift, brought her ancient grave closer to the surface. There she lay until rains cut down through the Earth and one heavy storm brought her to light again. Spotting such rare human fossils doesn't happen often. But we can discover a great deal about our ancestors' world by looking for the more plentiful remains of the animals that lived with them. As soon as we're settled in, everyone is eager to see what this year's rains have washed out onto the surface. We're a team of Ethiopian and American scientists, and with us, some of the sharpest-eyed fossil finders of all, the local Afar people. There's really no other way to find fossils except to walk these exposures day in, day out, hoping to find something interesting. Uh, here, for example, there's this uh, a, a canine of a, uh, of a hippo and a very beautifully preserved uh, molar of, um, of, a, of a giraffe. It's interesting that virtually every animal has its own diagnostic uh, anatomy, its own diagnostic features. So even from a single tooth like this, we can tell what, uh, what kind of a creature it was. A good specimen that uh, we'll catalog and, and bring back to camp. But how could hippos and giraffes live in this harsh desert? It must have been a very different place three million years ago. All told, we've collected more than 10,000 specimens from over a hundred species, everything from rodents to elephants. The clues to their lost world lie scattered all over the ground. Although it's a seemingly uninteresting piece of bone, if uh, you look at details, you begin to see a number of clues. For example, uh, the shape of the tooth indicates that it was probably from a pig, uh, part of a lower jaw. But even more intriguing is a series of uh, indentations on the inside of the jaw. And if we look at them with a, uh, a hand lens like this, it's obvious that that bone was pushed in when it was fresh. And it's uh, very likely that uh, this pig three million years ago had wandered down to, say, the edge of a river 
and uh, became dinner for some, some lucky crocodile. A picture of our ancestors' vanished world is beginning to emerge. Here's more of this uh, elephant tusk that's eroded out down this slope, and, uh, aha. Uh -huh. Here are both tusks of the elephant. And here are the upper molars. By keeping track of every fossil we find, we can map out a world totally different from Hadar today. The geologists can help us too. They sample ancient layers of the earth that have been exposed in the Great Rift Valley. Geologist Tesfai Yamani has discovered that Hadar was wet and forested millions of years ago. This is a Landsat image of the Hadar uh, area, and then as you can see, there are several uh, dry uh, rivers coming from the western mountain of Ethiopia flowing to our river. The same thing was happening during the time or between four and three million years ago, except this, uh, the, the, the river were flowing through uh, very thick forests, not a desert like today.